Hello, my friends. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God, come upon you all and let there be light to enlighten your understanding so that you all may know and be aware and have discernment of the greatness of the revelation that without the Holy Spirit, without the person of the Holy Spirit, it is very difficult, I would say impossible for a person to be saved. That's why they need to to have people investing their all, their life, their talent, their wisdom, placing the Lord Jesus in first place in their life. But not only when they go to church, but He has to be first, he has to be first at all times, 24 hours a day. He has to be the first. When the person then receives the Spirit of God, they become the temple, the dwelling place of the Almighty, the dwelling place of God. So God starts to live within that person. So this is extremely glorious and very important. Have you imagined, my friend? You having the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of creation, the Spirit that said, let there be light and there was light and let there be dry land and then the earth came into existence. Have you imagined having Him inside of you? It's something measurable. It's something indescribable, infinite, which only those who have Him know what I'm talking about here. Those who don't have Him are at loss. What can we do? But that's the reality. Why many people don't have the Holy Spirit? It's natural. I understand that when a person has nothing, has no information of the things of God, of the Word of God. So they live in sin because they've become slave of sin. They are slave of sin and they cannot see that they are slaves of sin. They are slaves of sin. Why? Because when they allowed sin to enter in their life, or better, actually, when a person is born, they are already born in sin. But when they have understanding, when they grow up and become an adult and mature, so they know what is right and what is wrong. Everything that is right is from God. It's righteous, it's correct. Everything that is wrong is sin. And everybody knows that, what is right and what is wrong. Everyone knows, even the children know it. When a child does something wrong, they hide themselves or they try to hide what they did because they already know that they are doing something wrong. But let's deal here with people who are already rational or better saying, they already use their reasoning. So when a person sins, when they make a mistake, when they commit a sin, what happens? They open the door of their life, of their soul, and sin comes in, which is a spirit. Sin is a spirit. If you didn't know it, you know it now. Sin is a spirit that enters their life and then that's it. They allowed it to enter. And then the sin becomes Lord of that person's life. And that's why people suffer. Every suffering, every anguish and problems and difficulties that people face in this world, it's due to sin. The wage of sin is death. Because God is righteous, so how can He condone 
any type of sin and unrighteousness. So many people who have knowledge of the Word of God know these have the knowledge. They know I am living sin. I am aware that I am wrong. And there are people who even leave comments here. Bishop, please pray for me. Look, I don't want to lie, but I, I live lying. I do not want to sin, but I'm always sinning. Oh, come on. They lie consciously. They sin consciously. So if they know that what they are doing is wrong and they continue to do it, then how can this, this person want to receive the Holy Spirit? How? So they have to fight against their flesh, against their will, their desire. They have to fight against lies. They have strength and conditions and power to decide for what is right. However, if they want to follow what is wrong, then who can help such person? Especially when a person is in the church. And how can God enter a person who is all holy in the church but outside is like a little demon? Let's put it this way. How can they receive the Holy Spirit this way? So, Paul, directing his letter, his epistle to the Christians, the Christians in Rome, he said like this. He said, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. He's talking to Christians here, Christians who are in Rome, who are facing the lions, facing persecution, persecution, the, the, the Roman emperor persecuting the Christians. He said, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed, so he puts up if here, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Paul didn't know. I'm writing this letter here to you. I don't know who is reading it, but know the following. If you are in the flesh, you please the devil. If you are not in the flesh and you are in the Spirit, you please God. And he says here, he completes, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, if the Spirit of Christ is not in you, he is not his. Which means, it's very clear, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone doesn't have, does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So the evangelical churches, including the universal church, the churches are full of people who divide their life between serving God and serving the devil. That's the reality. Which means those who serve the devil are not serving God, but in their minds they are serving God. They have works, they do charity, they help people, they speak to them about the Lord Jesus. However, behind the scenes, there inside, they live in sin. They live a life of mistakes. And I'm not going to be listing things here because you know when you, you make a mistake, isn't it? We know. When we make a mistake, we, we sin. We know we sinned because we have conscience of it. Our conscience accuses us immediately, isn't it? Our conscience is a scale, let's say, that tests and proves whether we are doing what is right or wrong, depending on what we've decided to do. When the person has the Holy Spirit, they have the conscience of what is wrong, 
of what is sinful, of what displeases God. And so they avoid these things, they run away from these. But when the person does not have the Spirit of God, even still, without the Holy Spirit, they have conscience. And in their conscience, this conscience tells them, listen, this is wrong. So they know that what they are doing is wrong. They know that they are doing something wrong when they are doing something wrong. So it's like we've said this before here some time ago, but the case of a certain woman who looked for the bishop of the Universal Church and said, oh, bishop, I've been in the church for more than 15 years. I've done campaigns of Israel, my purposes, and I see all the people receiving blessings, giving wonderful testimonies, but I haven't received anything. Okay, things got better here and there, my finances, but my life in general is a disaster. And she lamented and complained. You know how these people are. They know how to speak of their lament really well. So what happened? B the bishop said, but pay attention. I, I don't know what's happening to you, my dear. How can I know? I just know one thing, that those who receive these blessings and the Holy Spirit, those who participate in the campaign, they place their life indeed in the fire. And that's why it's, it's a holy campaign. The fire burns, but it burns what is evil, what is not good. They put all of their soul in the campaign. It's a holy purpose. Now, there are those who don't surrender a hundred percent, so the fire only burns half of it, and what is evil remains still in their life. So the bishop asked and went deeper, but tell me, how is your life? She was like, oh bishop, oh my life is like this, and they started talking, and then what did she say? Oh, I, I have a lover. Oh, my dear, you have a lover? Yes, how long has it been? Oh, many years. Oh, come on, my dear. How can you want to receive the Holy Spirit? How do you want to receive God and have God dwell inside of you? You want God to make your body His temple, His dwelling place, and you still divide your body, you share with your body, this body of yours we've seen. So your life is never going to change. It's pointless to give offerings and to make sacrifices. It's pointless. The sacrifice you have to make, even if it's a financial sacrifice, it has to be followed by a spiritual sacrifice. Because if the spiritual is not really sacrificed, the emotional is not sacrificed, which in her case was the sin, so then what's the point? It's the, the same thing those who are baptized in water, or was baptized already ten times. Of course, you went a, a dry sinner, you came out a wet sinner, and in her case, she went on the altar as a sinner, committing adultery, and she came down from the altar as an adulteress. So what's going to change in her life? Nothing. Nothing can change. So don't deceive yourself, my friend. With God, cannot be cannot be more or less. With God, there is no such thing of oh, let's let's make a deal here. No, it's not like this. It's all or nothing. You either you go or you don't. That's the reality. Here, Paul says, you are not. He's talking about the saints. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, because if He doesn't dwell in you, you are no longer a saint or holy. If anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, He is not His. It's written here, He is not His. They are not of God, let alone baptized in the Holy Spirit. They are not of God. This is very very strong and obviously this word here is directed 
to those people who say they are Christians. This is not even for unbelievers, because the unbelievers, they are already immersed in their sin. They are already dead to their sins and mistakes. But those believers, those people who have been professing their faith in Jesus and so on, but they don't mean it. But they don't have the Holy Spirit, so they are not of God. They are not of God just as much as the unbelievers who are outside. I know that when we, we say, we speak this way, many people get shocked and even hurt. But you just have to read the Bible, it's written there. Romans chapter 8, read the whole chapter and you are going to see. It's better for you to get the whole text. I'm just here mentioning one or two verses. But read, read the Bible and you are going to see it. Or are you afraid of reading the Bible? Or are you afraid of knowing the truth because you like lies? And those who like lies, they don't want to know the truth. You already fell in love with lies. You already fell in love with what's wrong. So what can we do? Thank God. Thank God that there are people who, even though are living in sin, they are immersed in sin. However, deep inside of them, there is sincerity. And they say, oh my God, I am in this life because I don't know what to do with my life. I'm lost. If you exist, give me a chance. Show me the way. Give me a direction. I need you. When the person then has this posture, this kind of behavior, even though they are immersed in sin, then God hears and gives them a chance. God gives them a chance for them to choose what is right, to leave that life behind, abandon their sin, and to live a righteous life. God gives, and this type of people who are sincere, they are the ones who are receiving the Holy Spirit. Thank God. And we bring the gospel to those who are thirsty. Who is thirsty? Those who are sincere. Those who are sincere are thirsty for truth. They are thirsty for righteousness. Those who are sincere, they want to do what is right. Those who are sincere, they do not want to do what is wrong. A person who is sincere wants what is right, what is correct, what is fair. And because of that, these people have the chance of being saved. Why? Because God gives them the opportunity, for sure. Now, if the person lives in sin and they like it and they even try to compensate their sin by going to church, this won't resolve the problem. It won't compensate at all. So you have to decide what you want. One thing is for sure, if you are of God, the Spirit of God lives in you and you don't live in sin. If you are not of God, you don't have the Spirit of God. You don't have it and, and you don't know God. And obviously, you are not a child of God because only those who have the Spirit of God and who are born of the Holy Spirit are children of God. Then obviously, they have the Holy Spirit. Did you understand, my dear friend? Think about that. Your life, your soul, it's your soul. Everything will pass away, this world will pass away, everything will end and cease. You know that. All of us know it, isn't it? Everything will pass away and come to an end. Nothing will be left. Everything will be burnt. You see these youths who are eluded, deceived. We understand because they are young, they are immature, they are children. But those who have already a certain age, you already have 
a certain conscience. You know a bit more of life, isn't it? Tell me the truth, you who are listening to me now. You know life. You know that everything will pass, everything will end, everything will finish. All is vanity. But whoever has the Spirit of God, this one lives intensively because the plenitude of the Almighty dwells in their body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's when you have peace, you walk in righteousness, you have peace and you have joy. And that's why Jesus said that whoever drinks of the water I shall give him, this water will become in him a fountain of water to everlasting life, and to everlasting life to those who have the Holy Spirit. May God bless you all. And until later on, when we are going to be live, by the way, even entering in prisons, yes, we are going to enter in, into prisons through a, a broadcast, of course, and we are going to have the privilege of speaking and sitting at the table with prisoners because many people are there, but they are there because they didn't know the truth. And now they are thirsty for the truth and we are here today to bring the water of everlasting life to them. I'll be live at 6 p.m. the time zone from Brazil, okay? May God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.